S. Hello, welcome to Digging, my brand new podcast about music and growing. On the plot today is a well-loved musician from South London who's been a force in UK music since he was just 12 years old. Best known as a rapper and producer, with collaborations with people like Skepta and Jamie XX, as well as a Mercury Prize nomination under his belt, he was one of the first people I thought of when I decided to invite guests onto the allotment. There's no feeling like creatively expressing yourself in a way that you, you intended to. So I kind of get a relief and a buzz from that. Like if I make a song and I really like the song, that's like what the average nine to five person, it's probably the feeling they get when they go on holiday. There's something about his production that signals towards an exploratory and open nature, and I got the feeling that he'd be extremely fun to hang out with, which, happily, turned out to be true. The task I needed his help with this week was all about ground prep for the season ahead. It mainly entails turning and weeding the top layer of soil. It's definitely not the most scintillating of tasks, but these moments of laborious repetition are a vital part of allotment life, and I was thrilled to have some help with it this week from such a brilliantly funny and warm guest. This week, we're digging with Novelist. Hello. <laughs> These are very bright white trainers. Good nice to meet you. Hello, Flo. Welcome. Are you a garden fan? Yeah, I used to garden. It was quite a while ago, though. That's OK. We're not really going to do anything super exciting today. We're actually just doing ground preparation and pruning today. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I've got some gardening gloves for you. Nice. I don't know what size your hands are. One is bigger than the other. As in one pair is bigger than the other. Yeah, what is this? You don't have to wear them, but it'll just be easier on your hands, I think, for the... That should be all right. Yeah? yeah. Fantastic. Might actually be kick-starting, like, <laughs> this back in me again. Do That's you know great. Because I, mean? I was even in my nan's garden, like, maybe, like, four days ago, and I was looking at it thinking, this could be good. Yeah? Do you know what I mean? But I, what, uh, what's the government saying about growing certain things? Like, they're not really... What do you mean? Like, can you just grow what you want in your garden? Yeah, you can grow anything. Literally? Yeah, anything. Hmm. What kind of restrictions do you imagine that there would be? Just like, I don't know, man. Like, every, all the food has to be, like, approved, innit? N not if you're eating I think if you're selling it, yeah. Okay. But if you're just eating it yourself, you can do whatever you want. OK, yeah, that's good. That's yeah. good news. You start, I reckon, in this corner mm -hmm. and work this way. And I'm going to start in this corner and work this way. You just want to keep the grass as the, the patch like line or whatever, so okay. it's sort of to there. And so we're just even pulling up everything, basically. We're pulling up everything, so even this stuff. What um, is that? That is an old kale plant. Oh, that's kale? Yeah, it's an overgrown kale plant. And this was, I think, some sort of lettuce. And so were these, but they're gone now. They're dead. Uh, do you know what? I'm, I'm actually gassed. Like, I can't wait to start gardening again. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't even you, done you, one thing. But do you so know great. what it is? Like, I'm looking at it. If, like, it's like I forgot the feeling of like looking at plants and being like, that's actually a life form. Like, it's so therapeutic. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It's so, so nice. I think I might start gardening in Ghana as well. Oh, yeah. So you just got back from there, right? Yeah, I just got back from Ghana still. For a long time? I was there for a couple months. I migrated there now. What is the music scene like there at the moment? Probably one of the best scenes I've ever experienced in terms say, of nightlife. I feel like a lot of people are going there. Yeah, pe people are going there. Like Everyone's heading over there because the vibe is like second to none. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was, it was, it was, I had such a blast out there still. So when you go back, do you think you're going to stay for a while? Yeah, I've kind of established myself over there. So. Okay. Yeah, man, I'm, I've even right now I've got a car being built. Yeah, E30, classic. I was talking with my guy, I said, who's got E30s out here? And it so happened that his mechanic had just bought one. So I called him straight away and I said to him, blood, what are you going to sell this to me for? When he told me the price, I was like, he made me an offer I can't refuse. <laughs> Do you get me? So I just... Destiny. I'm, yeah, so it's just, it's just being painted up right now. When I get back there, I'll have it ready. That's amazing. What's like a, a day in Ghana like for you? What do you do? Um, it varies, man, because there's, so there's so much to do still. I was kind of detoxing out there, so... Oh, yeah? Certain times I wake up, I'll, I'll make a very... You'd be surprised how powerful this detox is, you know? Like, I'll get pineapple, dice up some pineapple, and literally dice up cucumber with the skin on, 
put some water in the blender, blend that up. I'm telling you, you'll be, you'll be on the lav wow. in the next 15 minutes. <laughs> 15, 20 minutes. Like, that was running through me. <laughs> Pineapple, water, cucumber. That's it. That's it. You might want to put some celery or some, some ginger in there or something, but when I say that that is such a powerful detox, I was even alarmed. I couldn't believe it. I was thinking, no way, my whole life, like, like const say no to constipation. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no more, never again. <laughs> Yeah, I used to love doing this stuff, man. Really? I, I'm, I have to say, I was a bit nervous about... Because it's not the most exciting task. For me, and it I thought, is. Okay. <laughs> I, like, I like this kind of thing. Great. <laughs> I'm a very natural man, do you know what I mean? That's amazing. I, like, I used to climb trees and all of that stuff, so... You know, I climbed a tree once and I immediately fell out of it and broke my arm. So you broke your again. arm? Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. That's not good. So it was my first and uh, last time climbing a tree. Yeah. I'm at a new stage in my life, to be honest. Just like, where I'm more conscious of just... Health like, stuff. Yeah, just the way I'm living. Do you know what I mean? It's even nice to be gardening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's wholesome. <laughs> yeah. How old are you? 26. 26. I mean, I guess that's a good age to be getting into health, but it's young, still. Yeah. I'm young, but circumstantially old. Do you feel like you're an old head? Definitely, because my my peers growing up, the group that I was embraced by, they're all in their forties. Oh wow! Yeah. So when I was growing up, I was a young G amongst big men. Yeah. My doctrines and just the way I, I behave is like the foundation of that comes from just being around the older boys all the time. Mm. Is your brother older? Yeah, but he's my brother's not that much older than me. Right. Big Prem who's also one of my main producers, he's like a year and six months older than me. Okay. So he's not that older than me, but he's definitely my older brother. And you guys still making a lot of music together? Every day. Oh, sick. Every single day. Like, I, I, I made a couple tunes since I've got back, and I've only been back for a couple of days. Some people call it a flex, I call it my reality. I've never had a job in my life. <laughs> I've always <laughs> made music, do you know what I mean? Mm. So. It's yeah, like, since you were tiny, I guess. Yeah, I just don't. Uh, yeah, since I was small, man. Yeah. So I don't want to take my foot off the gas, especially coming back with that that Ghana energy. You know what I mean? Mm. Now I've I'm, I've been sun kissed. Not taking your foot off the gas is great, but also you're only 26 and you got to have some sort of time for yourself and like you know time to do things that aren't necessarily building towards like career things or whatever. But I guess when you go to Ghana, you get that sense of rejuvenation and like a bit of a yeah. break. Yeah, it's true. But, but do you know what as well, yeah? There's no feeling like creatively expressing yourself in a way that you, you intended to. So I kind of get a relief and a buzz from that. Like if I make a song and I really like the song, that's like what the average nine to five person, it's probably the feeling they get when they go on holiday. Mm. Like they feel like, yes. I've hit a like certain, I've done my goals, now I'm relaxing. That's what it's like when I step out of the booth and the tune's hard. I'm like, I, I feel like everything I've worked for is paying off in this song. You know what I mean? So. That must be an amazing feeling. Yeah, it's a crazy feeling, man. Yeah, like, no, you just nailed it. Like, big up Drake. I was talking with Drake a couple of days ago, yeah? Oh, yeah? Yeah, and I, like. Blimey. He's someone I've, I've had like some brief conversations with. Over, over the years, like, I don't really speak with him often, yeah? Yeah. But um, <laughs> he, had some, he had said something in an interview and um, what he was talking about was just that, that you know, that, that, that addiction to, like, releasing, like, being a musician that just, like, continuously drops. The point, the point that he referenced, it's in an interview with him in Little Yacht, yeah? And he, he was saying that, you know, some people, when they get to, like, their 50s, they, they kind of don't really gracefully exit from the music industry. Mm. It kind of, like, goes a bit downhill for them because, because of that addiction to, like, just, you know, being at the forefront and trying to maintain and, and whatnot. And I feel like I know exactly what he's talking about. Like, that's, that feeling is what I just described. You know, like, when you go in the booth and you make a song, and you know that if I've released this in the right way, the masses are gonna like, you're gonna have mass appeal mm. with this particular song. 
I don't know how to describe it, but there's no feeling like that. Like mm. that feeling is like, and then when you're on the stage experiencing it, there's times where you just you just even stand still because it's so overwhelming. Like you had a creation, you brought it to life, and then all these thousands of people are singing it. Like it's it's there's nothing like that. Do you know what I mean? So. So I take it you like performing live. Yeah, that's my forte actually. Really. Yeah, producing and performing live is my forte. Because. I always say this, I'm more of a producer than anything. I was going to ask you that, I was wondering. Yeah. Like, if that was a thing. I don't know, I know some people don't necessarily define themselves as more of a producer, more of a rapper, more of a singer, whatever it is. No, I'd, I'd always like to be regarded as more of, more of a producer, but I think that's because people kind of, like, have me down in their head as some MC guy that has a high top. Mm. But that was, like, ten years ago, mate. Look like? at that beautiful fox. Wow. He's really comfortable. He's probably looking for a snack. You know what they're on. He is coming. I read somewhere that foxes are so brave now that they're like ready to be domesticated, like dogs and cats or whatever. And that's why they're coming more and more in. I believe that's true. Yeah, because this is happening all the time. Foxes coming out like this in the middle of the day. I've got a fox in my garden that literally is like my cat, sits on the top of the shed. And just pulls up. Yeah, he just hangs out. Do you know why I believe it though? Because. These lot ain't like that. You see, when I was young, yeah, seeing a fox was like... I was doing a poo. Yeah, seeing a fox <laughs> was like a mythical creature, like when I was really small. And they were a bit more fluffy and bigger, yeah? Now, I feel like where they're like inner city creatures, they're raised in the hood like how we was raised in the hood. They're not like the old school foxes that were timid. Like, they, <laughs> they're born and raised here. <laughs> Do you get me? Literally. <laughs> So that when they one see the amazing. random, it's normal to them. But that one looked pretty healthy and fluffy. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's why I was like, look at that beautiful fox. That fox didn't look malnourished at all. Yeah, it looked very, very well fed. It's like Good it eats Wagyu beef. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> a gourmet fox. Are you an animal lover? Yeah, yeah, I love every animal still. Have you got any? Yeah, I've got a cat still. <gasps> What's it called? I had a dog in Ghana, but he died, man. Oh, what? Yeah, Rusty. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that pissed me off. I'm not surprised. He was, yeah, he was so he was so like he was young as well. Oh, like what a happened? baby. He just got sick and died. Oh, how sad. But you got a cat still here? Yeah, I got a cat here. What kind of cat? What's it look like? It looks like Garfield but slim. Oh nice. Kinda of like a fox. Yeah. Yeah. My cat's a G man. Talk to me a bit about music stuff. I don't know, so what you're doing in Ghana. Yeah, do you know what? Like, I just, when I went to Ghana, yeah, immediately I had a burst of inspiration. I kind of just, like, ended up trying out a, a whole bunch of different styles and vibes. Oh, yeah? And all of them turned out good, all of them. What kind of styles and vibes are we talking? Um, I don't know where to sonically place it on a spectrum. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. some of it is, like... West African inspired. Some of it's like, I'm a piano inspired. Mm -hmm. Some of it's literally like original beats. Do you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, it's not really like, I couldn't say this is a specific genre. Because mm -hmm. It's just something that, you know, I turned on the PC, made on a beat, made a beat, spat on it, and that was it. Or sang on it. I've been singing quite a lot as well, so. Oh, uh, like on um, one of my favourite songs of yours. What, Stay With Me? Stay With Me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves that one. It's so good, that song. Any Anytime someone references me singing, I know they're talking about Stay With Me. Because <laughs> I, was, I was going for it in that tune. Oh, really? Yeah, I was having a blast. <laughs> that song's funny. That song's, like, that song's like, it's a serious song, but it's funny as well. Sometimes I play it on the radio yeah. and people will be like because we've got this chat room on NTS and listeners can kind of feed back directly yeah. with what they're hearing live on the radio. And I'll be playing it and someone will be like, oh, yeah, I love this song, like, even though it's kind of like a joke song, I love it. And I'm like, is it a joke song? It's I don't fully, think it is fully, a joke song. It's fully not a joke song, but the, the thing is... the video is funny. In the video, I'm, I'm, I'm literally bossing up. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm laughing, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I, I get, like... I get why a man, man would take it that way. And it's good that it's... And I guess because it was a departure from stuff that people maybe knew you from before? Not necessarily a departure, but just, I know what you mean, like, more like a, a shock to the system. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, these lot don't know me for, for, for playing like that, so. Are yeah. you gonna do more stuff like that? 
Yeah, I got loads. Of, I got loads of stuff like that. Sick. I got. I got. Lo I've literally got loads of stuff like that. That's great. Is that kind of 80s sound like big in your childhood growing up, or is that's that just something you like as an adult? Or? That's exactly where it comes from. It just comes from like me and my brother watching like 80s movies. You know, listening to like the soundtracks and just wanting to emulate those vibes ourselves, really. So as we got older, it was like, we're not limited to like one sound or one genre. Yeah. We do what we like. Literally, who's gonna stop us? Yeah. No one. So like, we just started just playing about like that and we seem to have made, made quite a wave. I was gonna say, it seems like it's working for you. Yeah, it does, it does. It's great. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy about that. I like, I really do like that vibe. But yeah, in Ghana, I was, I was having fun. Just even just hearing music that I've never heard before was special for me because, you know, sometimes it's it's annoying being an artist because you feel like you don't get the fun of being a fan anymore mm. as much. And it's work. Yeah, because sometimes you hear music and you just think, oh, this is whack. Mm. Like, and I remember the days when I, when I never felt about felt that way mm. about certain music. I feel like I was exposed to more music that I like to just listen to. So mm. in Ghana, it was like that for me. I sometimes feel like that about um, doing my radio show. Like I listen to music with a, an end goal yeah. of whether or not it will fit in my show now because yeah. it's such a big part of it. Yeah. And sometimes I'll be enjoying something that is outside of the stuff that I usually play. Mm -hmm. And then I'll sort of dismiss it because it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's kind of this weird thing. I think it limits you creatively, like... Yeah, exactly, it does. You're doing a very good job. You know, I've realised I've got a technique here. Yeah, go on. Rake everything up, yeah. then, like, kind of sieve through it. Yeah, nice. Do you know nice. what I mean? So I'll pick up a bat and just shake it out. I feel like maybe you should be the host of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, I, I did use the garden, so... <laughs> like, I remember one time I, I pulled up my nan's whole garden like, and made the whole... The whole um, terrain, like kind of like, like where it is now. So your nan has a big garden. Yeah, pretty big still. Do you know what? We've still got like hella trees and shit. We've got a big apple tree. We've got two. Do, do you know? Do you know what June plums are? No. Or well, they call it in the Caribbean. They call them green gauge plums. They're like green plums. Okay. And when they're really ripe, they get yellow. Mm. We got like two of those trees. Sick. We got a cherry tree that's like re spouting. I don't know what to call it. We got we got one of those again. We've got hella blackberries everywhere. Sounds amazing. Yeah, it, it was when it was like, the garden was like super like catered to. So yeah. I kind of want to get it back to that. Is it important to you to reach a lot of people? Yeah, it is. It is at this point. Like when I was younger, I was like kind of anti-rebellious. Like, I didn't care. Mm. Forget the award shows, all of that stuff. Like, do you know what I mean? But I think now I see the value in reaching new crowds more so than, than just like, I still don't so much care about like anyone validating me. Mm. I validated myself when I exported the file. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like when I made the track, that was, that was the point where I got my award. Totally. In, in my head. I wonder if there's something about aging as well in that, like when you're really young, feels like it's more important to be, I guess cool is the wrong word, but like at something that's, it feels like, you know, a small amount of people, a niche scene, somehow is more valuable because it's, like, really interesting and only a few people get it and, like, da-da-da-da-da. I I for me, it was never that. I was just doing what I liked. I like, right. You know, like, when people get a bit tribal and stuff, I don't care about that. Yeah. Like, I was never on that. I was just doing literally what I liked. And, you know, what was, what was also accessible to me as well because there's a lot of stuff that I liked that I never did. You mean time. musically? Yeah. Okay. So um, you you more see me expressing some of my early influences now. I see, I see, I see, I see. But it's it's not to say that you know when I was making gram, I wasn't listening to this stuff. Yeah. Because I because I, I still make gram. I just made a gram tune the other day. Yeah. But I'm just not bound to that alone. Yeah. If that makes sense. Do you get me? And is that because you had a, a diverse musical upbringing? Yeah. Is that that's exactly where it's like? Why would I have a whole color palette and only use a couple colors on the palette to paint a picture? That doesn't make sense. Totally. What kind of stuff was playing in your house when you were a kid? Funk, soul, R&B, gangster rap, West Coast, um, jazz, Japanese jazz, Japanese rap. Wow. Um, you know, bossa nova, rare groove, 
disco, classical, like Mozart, them man there, you know what I mean? <laughs> Scott Joplin. Wow. Like early 1900s, like everything. Like my family just like music, you know what I mean? Yeah. Dance hall, bashment, reggae, all of that. Sounds great. Man's a music man. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, because like, um, I know your mum DJs. Yeah, my so mum's a bad man DJ. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, she's hard. That's so cool. Well, yeah, she's funnily enough, she's got my. I got, I got some decks in it. I got, um, I got two thousands and a DJ M nine hundred. Oh, nice. She's got that in her room. She used to do like, um, what's the word when when you've got a radio show and there's someone that like, helps you out on the show? Producing. Yeah, she used to produce as well. For on certain radio shows and stuff. Oh wow. My mum, she's always been into music, like from when we was young. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. she's, she's from the era of like. You know, when Salt and Pepper came out and that. Yeah. It's like, she's born in the 70s, so... It's an like, amazing time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of good music came out in, in you know, the last 40 years, really. Yeah. That's so nice to have something, I don't know, a bit of a sort of renaissance a bit later in life. Because sometimes, I don't know, you do things when you're young and, yeah. I don't know, maybe you don't appreciate them as much or... Yeah, or, or necessarily the opportunity for you to, like, thrive in, in that... That, that element is not necessarily there, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, my mum, she's got four children and she's done an extremely good job to, like, maintain and, and, and you know, like, she, keep us out of trouble as much as she could. Kind of hard to do that where I'm from, mm. but, you know what I mean? Mm. But she's she done a good job at, like, just, like, educating us on, on who we are and instilling that confidence in us. So she was really, like, hands-on with her children. And I think now we're all grown, she just, like, kind of flowing in her passions. Yeah, she can have some fun. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? So I, 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 like, I like being able to, like, have a hand in facilitating what she wants to do. Totally. She must be so proud of you as well. Every day, man, like, do you know what I'm saying? My mum's, my like, a proper melt. <laughs> Is she? Yeah, she gets teary-eyed and stuff. <laughs> Is she? You know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes I like get out of my face, man. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm playing, I'm playing. But you know what I mean. But yeah, no, my mum's. Like, mom's, relax, mum. Yeah, like, chill out. Yeah. She's like, no, son, you don't understand. Like, that's like, really sweet. I feel like I'm gonna be like that if I have kids, yeah, man. She's like a proper my biggest fan. So, I mean, that's great. I'll pick her up. Maybe we could talk a little bit about how you got into music, like your first sort of forays into it. Yeah. Is it something that you picked up at school? Not at all. For your brother? How, how I got into music is directly and only by my uncle. Oh. When I was young, he had all the softwares. So he had like FL Studio when it was Fruity Loops. He had a Cubase. He had Reason. And I've always stuck with Reason as a production software. So. I mean, I was, I was making beats when I was like seven, six years old. Seriously? Yeah, because I was just watching him and then he'd be like, yeah, nephew, have a go. So, like, I guess from then I just kept the ball rolling and now I'm novelist. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and he, he's the one who called me novelist. I, I, I actually, um, it was really his alias and I was, I was younger novelist. And then I was just like, yeah, I'm novelist now. Oh, wow. Does he mind that you're novelist now? He, he gave it to me. So it's not that he minds, he literally, he's like, yeah, you're a novelist, you know what I mean? That's amazing. Yeah. Do you have any, um, like, pre-show rituals when you play live? Stuff that you always do before you go on stage? Yeah, I just praise, praise God. And that I, keeps you? Yeah, I give thanks to Jesus for giving me the faith to, like, maintain and continue in my journey, because I've had some serious lows Yeah. as well, you know what I mean? Yeah. I've had ups and downs, so it's like... You know, my faith in God kind of kept me, like, grounded within myself, like, in terms of my identity of who I am. Mm. Have you always been religious? I wouldn't even say I'm religious. I'd just say I'm more faithful. Like, I more have faith. Right. So, because I wouldn't say, like, I'm the, I'm the, 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 the church-going guy. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, who has the routine of getting up, going to church on a Sunday, putting my yeah. clothes on and doing all of that stuff. I don't do that, really, if I'm honest with you. But it's kind of a... It's a big presence in your life. Yeah, man. It's like it's more. It's more. It's more like. I believe the scriptures. Mm. Like, 
people call the Bible a book, I call it a library. It's mm. a book of books. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I'll, I'll open up the scriptures, study them, read them, and try to apply what I think is fit for me in that particular time in my life. Mm. You know what I mean? I might, I might be needing faith in the area of confidence or in the area of wh- whatever the particular area may be. So I look at the scriptures that pertain to that and then that's kind of how I maintain who I am. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. And then I'll just rake my feet prints away. And you've also done a pretty good job of keeping your trainers not too muddy. Thank you for listening to Digging. If you enjoyed this podcast, please rate and review us on the podcast app that you're using. It really helps more people to discover the pod. To stay up to date with new episodes, you can also subscribe to get the newest episode in your podcast feed straight away. Digging with Flow was presented by me, Flo Dill, produced by Lizzie King, editing by Sam Stone, with sound recording and mastering by Felix Stock. This podcast was made possible thanks to NTS supporters. Become a supporter today for access to additional podcast content, live track lists when listening to NTS radio, access to supporter-only Discord and newsletter and store discount. 50% of supporter proceeds go direct to NTS resident DJs. Find out more at nts.live supporters.